They say that a good example is admired and a bad one is imitated. That's why, according to a recent study, celebrity magazines could cause more problems than people think. For five years, professors from the university CEU Cardinal Herrera in Valencia, Spain, researched over the covers of a popular magazine to learn how family values are being portrayed. We're worried about the simplification of close relationships, family relationships. We could say there's an excessive individualism. The most important thing is a subject as an individual with his partner or his children, but not his emotional relationship or his family environment. The family does not appear in this context. For example, these publications tend to show maternity more than paternity. During the five-year study, a father and his children appeared only once on the magazine cover. The study also confirmed what was already known. When the private lives of celebrities are exposed, the wrong family values are promoted. Marital commitment or family commitment sometimes is portrayed as slavery and the separation as a liberation or divorce as an exercise of freedom. Professor Maria Jose Pou says that when his type of content is read without critical perspective, irregular family situations could be considered normal. However, she stressed that the influence varies depending on the family environment of each reader. We assimilate family values mostly from our own experience. If we lived in a structured family environment of love, trust and respect, I think we internalize this more than looking at the cover of this type of magazines. With the study results, the group of professors have worked closely with experts in civil and ecclesiastical law towards the improvement of the image of the family in mass media. The Vatican Museum sponsored an ambitious exhibition of Ethiopian religious art opening this week in Venice. The exhibition Nigra Sum Sed Formosa, or I'm Black and Beautiful, retells the history of Christianity in Ethiopia through a collection of icons, crosses, manuscripts and liturgical objects from the 12th to the 20th century. On one side, Ethiopia has retained some elements of the oldest Christian tradition, such as the churches of the East or the culture of Syria, and on the other, it has received influences from Western art. According to one of the curators, one of the more impressive things about Ethiopian religious art is the detail of the iconography. Their iconography mixes the history of Christ with episodes from the history of Ethiopia. For example, shows Ethiopian saints at the foot of the cross. Another curator suggests seeing the paintings on wood panels, a technique that Venetian artists brought to Ethiopia proof of collaboration between both cultures. It's a long-standing relation because Venice was the gate to the east and everyone coming into Europe or leaving Europe for the Near East was supposed to pass by Venice. That's why a section is devoted to works by Italian artists, like this world map made by a Venetian friar with the help of Ethiopians that pass through Venice. It's a huge map, an amazing picture of the world, because it anticipates a geographical exploration of the world 30 years before, which at that time nobody could foresee. Nicolo Brancaleone was another Venetian artist who influenced Ethiopia's sacred art. Over the period of 40 years, he taught Ethiopians how to paint the main figures of the Christian religion. The painter Nicolas Brancaleone was sent to Ethiopia by the main authority of Venice to teach painting, in particular the image of the Virgin Mary. The exhibition also seeks to ensure Africa is not only remembered for its war or poverty, but for its beautiful and rich artistic tradition.